Um, thank you, Hypercultural, for having me here tonight. Um, it's really my pleasure to be in, here in Hamburg to tell you about our company, 18884930. We are a building company based in the UK. Um, although we're based in the UK, we come from Israel. Now, a lot of the time, you know, when we speak of Israel, one of the first things that people think of are the, is the Israeli-Palestinian <coughs> conflict. Um, we can talk about that later if we want, but tonight I would like to start from a slightly different perspective, so please bear with me. Now, when I mention Israel, a lot of the time people think, wow, it's a really rich country. And to a certain extent, this is true. If you look at um, the GDP data from the OECD, Israel is this red line. The OECD total is here. So actually, it's, it's, it's doing quite well from a GDP perspective. It's, uh, you know, from a gross uh, cap uh, income per capita, it's doing great. You know, and, and this is kind of countries like Turkey and Chile, you know, it's pretty much the average, but that's only half the story. When you look at total disposable income, what happens is that Israel is one of the poorest countries in the OECD. This is Israel here. France, which has a similar GDP to Israel, is here, okay? Israel has a poverty rate of 0 0.2. That means one out of five people live below the poverty line, okay? Now normally, you know, governments through various interventions like taxation, re redistribute wealth so that everyone's quality of living um, you know, becomes much more reasonable. But what does it mean to live below the poverty line in Israel? I have some data uh, to compare between Israel and Germany. The average salary in Israel is about 10,000 shekels, which with the exchange rate is about one to four, so that's about 2,500 euros per month. The average German salary in 2017 is 3,700 euros. These are gross numbers before tax. At the same time, everything is cheaper in a city like Hamburg than in Tel Aviv. Look at the rent. It's almost 40% cheaper to live in Hamburg than in Tel Aviv. Yet at the same time, the Israeli, the Israeli is making less money than someone living in Hamburg. So, you know, the, the, you expect governments to, to somehow use taxation to redistribute wealth, so what is happening on the Israeli taxation <coughs> system? Okay, so Israel has a progressive taxation model, like most countries. This means the more money you make, the more tax you pay. It starts at 10%, so, and this is, even if you make 100 euros per month, you still have to pay 10% 10, 10 tax. Then it goes to 14, 21, 31, 34, 48, and up to 50. The average Israeli salary is 10,000 shekels, so we put it into the 21% tax bracket, okay? Meanwhile, if you look at the German um, income tax system, you don't pay taxes until you make um, above 735 euros per month. And, uh, and, and the average Israeli salary would fall into the 15% income tax bracket instead of 21%. That's a huge difference. But that's not all. On top of income tax, every single month you have to pay something called Bitua Bui. This is social security. So, for example, you give birth, then you can take um, you can take four months off, and you get benefits for it, stuff like that. Um, so, you every month seven percent of your paycheck is deducted 
for Bitoa Flumi, your employer, the company you, you work for, pays another 7.5% on top of that. And then on top of that, you have to pay 5% health contributions. This comes out of your paycheck every single month. Which means, before the money even arrives into your bank account, about a third of it has disappeared and gone straight to the government. So, what we propose to do is we will help you adjust your taxes. This is 1888-4930's solution. Let's say you are a normal salaried employee, you know, working for as a secretary five days a week in Israel, you know, nine to five normal job. You make ten thousand shekels a month. In one eight 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 four nine three zero setup, what happens is you still do the same job, you still work for the same company, but instead, at the end of the month. Instead of the company paying you directly, we, 1888-4930, sends a bill to company A, the company A you, you are working for. Company A then pays us. We are in the UK, okay? And then what, what happens is then we send you a part of your 10,000 shekel salary into your Israeli bank account, but we only send a part. So, for example, out of the 10,000, you know, we talk and you agree that we only send 5,000 shekels into your Israeli bank account. This means that technically in Israel, you only made 5,000 shekels income. This moves you into the 10% income tax bracket instead of the 21% income tax bracket. Not only do you have a lower percentage to be taxed on, but you're also being taxed on at a lower amount. So let's see how this translates into real numbers. If you're a regular employee making 10,000 shekels, you pay 21% tax, which means 2,100 shekels is automatically deducted, just an income tax. Then you have to pay bitu akrimi. 7% at 700 shekels. Your employer pays another 750, but you know, it's not out of your pocket directly. You then have to also pay pension, that's 6%. Now pension is technically a privately managed fund that you choose between your, your, your boss, but you know, so you know, we don't really think about that, but you, it's a mandatory uh, deduction. Health tax, 5%. So out of your 10,000 shekel paycheck, 3,950 has already been gone, okay? That's if you're a normal salary employee. Now, if you change to a freelancer status and work with 1888-4930, what happens is, let's say we decide we agree to only transfer 5,000 shekels into your Israeli bank account. This moves you into the 10% income tax bracket you pay 500 shekels instead of 2,100 shekels. Not only that, but you also qualify for a lower Bitua Plumi rate, 2.87% instead of 7%. So you pay 143 and a half shekels instead of 700 shekels. Um, and then you also, okay, the pension rate at 5,000 shekels is 12.55. Um, is this is a new mandatory law uh, that freelancers have to contribute to a pension fund. Um, so, still, you know, it's a higher percent, but, you know, it's a lower amount, so it comes up to about the same, 628 versus 600. You also enjoy lower health taxes, 3% instead of 5%. So... What happens is that every month, even including our 5% administrative fee, you save 2,879 shekels. That's roughly 700 euros every single month. 
you don't have to do anything extra. You just have to become a freelancer in Israel and work for our company. Um, I don't know of any bank that offers so-called high rates of saving accounts that offers an interest anywhere close to this amount with just the equivalent of a 2,500 2, euro sum. So, this is a very attractive offer, I believe. Um, the question I'm sure a lot of you are asking is, well, you know, so I only get 5,000 shekels in my Israeli bank account. What about the other 5,000 shekels? Well, what is really important here is that the remaining 5,000 shekels is sitting at 18884930 in the UK. When you become a freelancer with us, what happens is you also become a shareholder of the company that owns 18884930, which means you don't technically own that 5,000 shekels anymore, but you do own it because you are the corporation that owns that money, which means it's your money and you have control over it. Now you might be wondering now, who, who else is in the mother company? Most of them are other freelancers like you. There are other, others who are Israeli and Palestinian poets, but I'm gonna show you exactly you know, how you can become a shareholder of the mother company. To begin with, I'm afraid most of you may not qualify for shareholder status because it's only open to Israelis and Palestinians for now. Um, there are two options. You can sell me all the land you owe in Israel, Palestine for the sum of one dollar. All of it. Actually, most Israelis and Palestinians don't own that much land. So, most people would qualify for number two. Demonstrate in deed, that means in action, commitment to the corporation's objectives and values. So, what are our company's objectives and values? This is from our company's Articles of Association, which is the equivalent of a company's constitution. Um, the corporation's sole purpose and objective is to support the common good of all our shareholders, which can include, but is not limited to freedom of expression, food, housing, medical care, and education. So this is unlike most companies that make profit maximizing their main objective. We are committed to the right of people to have rights, and we are in the business of poetry publication. So, not only do you feel good about putting out wonderful art into society, but you can also be rest, you can also rest assured that we will never make a profit that would lead to our company being taxed. Furthermore, on becoming a shareholder, you will also have to agree to the following that Palestinians and Jews trace these, their origins to this land, this land being Israel, Palestine, um, and that, you know, both Israelis and Palestinians have a cultural tie to the land and have the right to live in there freely and securely. Disparities over favoring Jews over Palestinians should end. Um, you know, there has been a long military rule over um, Palestinians and this should also end and we want to secure equal rights for both parties between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea. We also want all shareholders to acknowledge that human beings are born into specific classes, identities and conflicts, social divisions do exist and maybe it may not be completely reconciliable. And, but it is not our aim to erase disagreements. We are not asking anyone to erase their identities or their 
their social classes because it is, it is perfectly legitimate to be different. And so, if you know anyone who would like to become a shareholder with us, um, please feel free to forward them my way. Um, does anyone have any questions about uh, 188849300?